we're back in the kitchen and we're making teas today and so uh, we're going to make different Ayurvedic teas and they're really simple no brainer teas because they're already pre-mixed for you and they're actually botanical teas there's no caffeine in these yet they can help you with balancing many mind-body uh, issues including energy um, will make one tri-doshic tea and what that means is it will balance all the three doshas so no matter what your mind body constitution this one's going to help balance all of them and then if you want to get more specific we have uh, one for each dosha for vata, pitta and kapha so I'm going to start with this tri-doshic tea here and uh, we'll make two cups today so simply pouring in uh, two cups of water and we'll bring that to a boil. So if your balancing uh, tea is vata, what it will balance in you are things like um, constipation, gas, bloating. If you tend to be cold natured, cold hands and feet. Uh, if you're a pizza balancing tea, your pizza is going to help you balance if you have too much heat in your body. Maybe you tend to have heartburn or acid indigestion, uh, maybe diarrhea, irritability, um, impatience, anger, hot flashes. Um, and then if you're using kapha balancing tea, and this is the one that's very good for if you tend to feel um, tired, lethargic, heavy, uh, both in your digestion and your elimination and also, if your mind tends to be slow or sluggish, and it takes you a long time to wake up in the morning. So this tridoshic tea has uh, the ability to help aid all of those. Um, and then if you want to be more specific, if you feel like you are more one than the other of what I just described, then you would probably purchase that tea or you could mix the two teas together. Now, if you're just drinking botanical teas, like these casually that's fine just because they taste good but if you're looking to receive the benefits I just described then you would make it a more medicinal tea a casual tea would be a light tea um, maybe just a teaspoon to a cup of water and you have that one cup of day but if you're looking to make a medicinal tea you want to make a more concentrated formula so I'm probably going to use like two to four teaspoons to this two cups of water and then um, the other way to have a richer concentrate is obviously to make more tea just like that two teaspoons maybe three teaspoons to the two cups of water and have a, a concentrate that you're drinking throughout the day so instead of one cup of day maybe you'll have two to four cups a day and you'll do that for a week and you'll notice the benefits that way so I'll often hear from um, clients just from using the tea regularly uh, for instance one woman was uh, having really regular hot flashes but they were calmed and soothed from this practice another person was having um, digestive disorder lots of gas and bloating and discomfort and, and, and she found comfort just by using the medicinal dosage it's a very kind a simple and easy way to balance your doshas so the, the water's not quite boiling. I'm going to go ahead and add it. It's not going to hurt to add. Um, I'm one of those um, cooks that doesn't really measure very well. And so this, this kind of tea is forgiving that way. And I like a little thicker concentrate because I do use teas, um, beverages, and foods as medicine rather than taking a lot of supplements. I'm adding these in and so there'll be items in here that you're very familiar with rose petals lavender jasmine fennel coriander cumin for the kapha we've got a little bit of the spicier items to stimulate um, and energize and that would be ginger and black pepper the flowers, the cooler calming flowers I just mentioned are good for vata and pitta. And so you want to bring this to a boil, which is starting to happen now. And I'm waiting for it to boil, and then once it boils, I'm going to set it to a simmer. 
And I'm going to let that simmer until the heavier herbs, the denser herbs, fall to the bottom. The flowery herbs will fall to the bottom pretty quickly. So here comes the boil. And then I'm going to set it to simmer. And just, you know, stir it a little bit. You really don't have to watch over this a lot. You can actually walk away while it's simmering and you know, get some other things done and then come back and it'll be ready for you. And normally, yeah, I make a big pot. I like to have um, at least, um, oh, I, I really like tea throughout the day. So this would be something that I would mix a lot of. There's different ways to strain your tea. These um, are available at uh, Santa Vida. Um, I ha I'll have some tea strainers coming to the website, but for now, you can set that in your cup and strain that way. Later, when I decide to sweeten, um, I choose that also based on how I'm feeling. And so sometimes if I feel like I've had too much sweetener, then I'll just have the tea plain. If I'm going to add honey, and we always use raw unfiltered honey because it is um, full of the vitamins and enzymes that we're looking for also to help us balance our my body constitutions. But if I use honey, I'll never add the honey when it's boiling. We don't cook honey because then it alters and changes the uh, qualities that we're looking to gain from it, the benefits that we're looking to gain. So I will uh, wait till my tea cools a little bit. You should be able to dip your, your finger in. So it's almost ready. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll pour everything back into the cup, the measuring cup, so whatever I'm not using in that moment will still be soaking in all the great nutrients and balancing effects of the herbs. And then just take what I need. You can even let that sit for a little while longer so that it cools long enough that you can then add your honey. On days where I'm looking for extra energy and extra nutrients, in this same line, in the same idea of Ayurveda health and balancing, we have something called Rasayanas. A nickname for these are nutritive food jams. Nutritive food jam, a little deceiving. It sounds like you're going to spread it on a piece of toast, but you're not. Because you really want to take it on an empty stomach or with tea. So it's a little sticky. These are herbs cooked in ghee, which is clarified butter, and a mild sweetener that's uh, dosha appropriate. So it'll either be raw cane sugar or honey or rice syrup, which is um, best for pitta because it's not too sweet and it's um, low on the glycemic indicator, so it's good if you have any sort of um, sweet or a diabetes imbalance, insulin imbalance. And so this is the idea of how we use vitamins and minerals and supplements in Ayurveda. So I'll just take a little bit. It's anywhere from, oh, one teaspoon to a tablespoon for beginners because it's, it's herby tasting. Even though it's sweet, it's herby tasting. I would say maybe one teaspoon or not quite a teaspoon. And again, we want to wait till the herbs have settled and the, um, the tea is, it's warm, but it's not really, really too hot that would burn your finger. And then I'd add this Rasayana, or this nutritive food jam. 
The Rasayana, the word Rasayana is another Ayurveda yoga, Ayur yoga word, a Sanskrit word, which means that which makes young again. So it actually helps to restore damaged tissue in the body. So if I'm using a Vata Rasayana, again, it's going to help balance those things I talked about earlier, helping with circulation, better digestion, better elimination. If mentally, emotionally you tend to be cold or fearful or anxious, it's going to help balance that out. And again, this idea of drinking um, the tea throughout the day is the medicinal idea. But for the Rasayana, you really only need to have one application a day. So just like you would take your vitamins in the morning, you would have one. You could take the Rasayana straight out of the jar. But I found with most of you that I work with that you really love, like me, mixing it with tea. It's easier to digest and makes it more palatable. Enjoy!